G'day everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a simple first person pick up and drop system in Unity that you can use in your own games for weapons, power ups, food and other items. This will be building off the interaction system from the previous video, so if you haven't watched that be sure to check it out to get up to speed. First things first, we're going to make one change to our previous system. In our iInteractable interface, we're going to pass in a parameter of type interaction controller into the interact method. The reason we do this is our interactable objects can now get information about who is interacting with the pickup. You'll notice we have some errors, but we can fix those super easily. In our interaction controller, in our check for interaction input method, all we need to do is pass in itself into the method, and in our spawn button class, we just need to add our interaction controller parameter. And that should take care of everything. Now the first new class we're going to make is called Pickup Controller, and we're going to give it a serialized transform called Pickup Holder. This will be the transform where we will move our items to when we pick them up. But before we fill out the rest of this class, we're going to jump across and make a new interface called iPickupable. This is going to inherit from iInteractable so it can work with our existing interaction system. And we're going to give it four methods. Grab and Drop, which both take a Pickup Controller, one called set position in parent with a transform parameter called new parent and one called use. We can now hop back to our pickup controller and finish it off. We're going to make two more variables, an iPickupable called current pickup and a public bool called has pickup, which is expressed as current pickup does not equal null. We're going to need a way to assign a pickup to the controller, so we're going to make a method called public void grab pickup iPickupable new pickup. Then current pickup equals new pickup and then current pickup dot set position in parent pickup holder. So we internally set our new pickup and then position it in the correct location. Then we'll make void update and inside we'll need two methods, check drop input and check use pickup input. Let's start with check drop input. All we need is if keyboard dot current dot q key dot was pressed this frame and has pickup, then current pickup dot drop and pass in this and then set current pickup to null. So if we have a pickup and press Q, then we'll call the drop method on our item and then remove the item from our controller. Next up is check use pickup input, which will be very similar. If mouse.current.leftButton.was pressed this frame and has pickup, then current pickup.use. This one's straightforward too. If we click our mouse while we have a pickup, then we'll use the pickup in some way. And this is the benefit of interfaces. The pickup controller knows nothing about how these individual pickups work, and it doesn't need to. And because of that, we can make these really flexible systems. So we've written how our player is going to use these pickups, but now we need to go and make an actual pickup that we can use. So we're gonna make a new class called physics pickup, which inherits from mono behavior and iPickupable. We're gonna autofill our missing members by pressing Alt Enter. And we're going to need three extra serialized variables a rigid body called pickup rigid body, a collider called pickup collider, and a vector three called pickup position offset. We're also going to make our interact message virtual and express it as press E to pick up. This means all pickups will have this message by default, but we'll look at overriding that a bit later. In our interact method, we're going to write var pickup controller equals interaction controller dot get component pickup controller, and then call our grab method and pass in the controller. In our grab method, first we'll make it a virtual method, which means we can override its function in another class, and then we'll write if pickup controller is null, or pickup controller dot has pickup, then return. If we don't have a pickup controller, or we're already holding something, we don't want to grab anything new. So if we have a valid pickup controller, and we're not holding an item, then we'll call pickup controller dot grab pickup, and pass in the pickup. For the drop method, we'll make it virtual as well and then we're just going to set our transform.parent to null. And in our set position in parent method, we'll set our transform.parent to our new parent, set our local position to our pickup position offset, and our local rotation to quaternion.identity. This method just repositions any pickup we grab so it's facing the correct direction. And the reason we use a position offset is that items will come in a range of sizes and shapes, and this allows us to position them in the most visible way. And lastly, we'll make our use method virtual and add in a quick debug message to check if it's working. Now because this type of pickup uses physics, we'll need to modify certain components when the item is being held. So if we're holding the item, we want to disable the collider and enable kinematics to prevent gravity from acting on the object. And then when we drop the item, we want to re-enable the collider and disable kinematics to allow it to fall again. 
So we can write a simple method called set physics values bool was picked up. And inside we'll write pick up rigid body dot is kinematic equals was picked up. And pick up controller dot enable equals not was picked up. Then in our grab method we can add set physics values and pass in true. And in our drop method we can add the method again but pass in false. And that's the base system done. Let's hop back into Unity and hook it all up. First, let's create an empty transform and call it pickup holder. And we'll child it to our camera so that our items will move with us when we turn. You can position it where you like, but you want it to be far enough in front of the character so you'll be able to see the items from your view. Then, on our player character, we can add our pickup controller and drag in our new pickup holder transform. That's everything for the player, now we can move on to items. I've got a basic red cube here and it has a default rigid body and collider. We can add our physics pickup to this cube and drag in our rigid body and collider. And we can leave our position offset at zero for now. Let's save that and jump into play mode. So if we head over to the bench, you'll see our interact message appear that we worked on in the last video. And if we press E, we'll pick up the item. And since we placed our pickup holder on our camera object, pickup will follow wherever we look with our camera. If we left click with our mouse, you'll notice in the console we get our debug message. And whenever we're done with this item, we can press Q and the item will drop to the floor. Perfect. Now that's the core of the system done. You can take this and expand on it however you like, but I'm gonna go over a quick few examples to show you how to get started by making a torch and a gun. Let's start with the gun. I've put together a quick gun model and given it a rigid body and collider. Now let's make a new script called gun pickup and open that up. We'll make it inherit from our physics pickup and you'll notice that we're not getting any errors. That's because our base class already has definitions for the required components like the grab and drop methods. But since we made them virtual, we can now override them in our new class to change their functionality. For example, let's change the text that appears on the screen by writing public override string interact message, then press E to equip. And let's also go public override void use debug.log shoot. Let's hop back into Unity, add our new class to our gun, drag in our components, and hit play. You'll notice that the cube has the original interaction message, but our gun now has a new message, which is what we overwrote in our class. And if we pick this up and left click, you'll see that we get our new overridden message. But one problem you'll see is that the gun is in a weird position on our screen. Let's fix that. If we drag our gun into our pickup holder and recenter it, you'll get an idea of what you'll see in game. This is where our offset from earlier comes in. We can tweak the position of our gun, and when we're happy with it, we can copy those values into our offset. Don't forget to uncharge our gun and move it back. Now if we go over to our gun and press E to equip, you can see it's in its new position and is looking much better. Let's have a deeper dive into overriding these methods by making a torch. I've put together a simple model using some cubes and added a spotlight to the front of it. I've also gone ahead and made a quick script with the basic functionality for the torch. We have a serialized field for our light, a method to toggle it on and off, and in the start method we make sure the light is off. Like before, we'll make it inherit from our physics pickup, and we're going to want to override two methods. First is use, we'll write public override void use, set torchlight, exclamation, torchlight dot is active and enabled. All this will do is flip the state of the light from on to off, or off to on. Let's also write public override void drop pickup controller, base dot drop and pass in the pickup controller, then set torchlight false. So whenever we drop our torch, we're going to turn it off. You might be wondering what this base.drop is. This method refers to our original drop method that we made in our physics pickup. Whenever you make a virtual method, you can extend the method or replace it, and it's going to depend on the scenario. In our case, our original drop method has important things like enabling gravity, so we still want to call that. But our use method just writes some logs, so we don't need to worry about including it here. Let's save and hop back into Unity. Let's add our new torch pickup and drag in our rigid body, collider, and light. Then, if we hit play and wander over to our torch and pick it up, and move over to somewhere darker, we left click, our torch turns on. And if we click it again, it turns off. And if we drop it while our light is on, it'll automatically turn off. And that's everything done. I hope you got something useful out of this. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below, and I'll be sure to do my best to answer them. That's everything for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers, everyone.